Liposuction is an integral tool, what we do, we use it for cancer patients, for fat grafting, um, we use it uh, to thin out tissues that we transfer for reconstructions. We do a lot of stuff with liposuction outside of just liposuction for cosmetic purposes. It's a, it's a, it's a tool. Um, obviously, lipidema is also within that realm in patients who are having symptoms. Um, patients who have lipodystrophies uh, or, or, or fat storage disorders have uh, changes secondary to certain drugs that they take. Uh, they all benefit from liposuction. It's a useful tool. How did you go from baseball to plastic surgery? I think baseball to medicine was sort of the initial step. Just. Um, two different aspects of me that I was equally interested in. One was um, sports, which I love. I've always been very active in sports. I played baseball through college. And through my sports, and some injuries, and interactions with doctors, and thinking about things that I like to do with science, uh, medicine seemed like an initial attraction for me in terms of a pursuit outside of sports. You know, initially when I came into practice, my, my final training was as a craniofacial surgeon, pediatric surgeon, but I, along that path, I had trained in cancer surgery because I was interested in being able to offer all of these treatments to children. But ultimately, the cancer program sort of blossomed here and I became much more involved in, in cancer surgery. With that, I saw a lot of patients with lymphedema, um, I had an interest in that since I was a fellow at MD Anderson. And then lipedema sort of came out of that because many patients with lipedema end up seeing lipedema therapists or seeing us. And, and so we were aware of it, um, but it was sort of a peripheral understanding. The fat metabolism component in lymphedema comes after the swelling and uh, sort of the fat deposition that we see and it's sort of vice versa in lipedema and yet both may have an inflammatory component. Um, they're, they're, there's probably some sort of pathways that are interrelated between the two entities and we wanted to investigate that more. And so it's been a circuitous route to come here, <laughs> uh, starting with baseball, no. <laughs> but uh, baseball, I will say that baseball and sports in general, as a surgeon, have been, um, I think, very helpful. You know, they really served as uh, a foundation to develop um, discipline, uh, commitment, uh, perseverance, um, acceptance, uh, or learning to deal with failure and not accepting failure, but coming back and, and trying to um, rethink things and find a better way to come back and succeed. With lymphedema, that's sort of what happened. You know, new imaging technology came around, some new techniques, and with a foundation and a desire to, to really look at this entity, um, we were able to kind of come back and, and start really building an approach that we think offers some, some improvement over what's, what was currently, or what was available in the past. And I think with lymphedema, there's no reason. You know, this is a similar problem that you know, has been sort of known for decades, I mean, back in the 40s, but nobody really took control of it or owned it and really start saying, how are we going to change this? How are we going to treat it? How are we going to learn more about it? It's just sort of this observation that was a diagnosis, but, you know, most patients are treated with compression and some get some relief, but I'd say it's even less successful than compression for lymphedema. You know, I think compression for, um, Lipedema may provide some relief, but um, certainly doesn't address the underlying problem. And um, and so, uh, you know, there's room for, for growth. And I think compression is a component of the treatment that we offer um, and that we're looking at with liposuction. I mean, you still need compression, but, you know, there's got to be some other other way to treat this. And if you bring enough people together who are motivated to do it, I think we're gonna find out. We know that lower extremity liposuction has certain risks that are more than other areas for blood clots and for um, prolonged swelling and, and things of that nature that we 
don't want to have as a sequela. It's very easy for you just to look at someone and say, okay, yeah, we'll book you for liposuction, thinking it's fairly innocuous, but there are problems that can exist. You know, swelling can uh, be secondary to the lipedema, but it can also be secondary to lymphedema, which can be exacerbated or require lifelong compression after liposuction. Um, venous insufficiency um, can cause, cause swelling in the legs. Venous insufficiency can also lead to a lot of bleeding at the time of surgery, if it's not recognized ahead of time. Um, congestive heart failure. Um, there, there, there are a multitude of things that can lead to swelling in the lower extremities that can't just immediately be assumed secondary to, to lipedema. The, the only pitfall is when you just look at it as a procedure and a, you know, in a single body part. And you're just saying, well, we're doing this on that body part. You got to remember, there's a whole, you know, a patient attached to that that body part that could be, you know, at risk of, of complications. So during our trip to Germany, we met with Dr. Sattler, Dr. Rapperich, and Dr. Stutz. And what became very evident was that each had thought about what they were doing very extensively. They were not just going at it like another liposuction patient. There was a thoughtful approach. But interestingly their techniques varied and even the timing of their techniques, um, how they would break out and break down the individual procedures varied. What we're trying to understand is, is there perhaps one way that's a little better or offers a certain advantage in, in a particular patient who has certain risks that another one might not. In certain areas perhaps one technique will work better, we don't know. But the thing that was evident is that um, it's perhaps more important to have to understand what you're doing and have a, a thoughtful approach that contains and minimizes the risks. And I, I will say the aftercare, the pre-care and aftercare was very thoughtful. And I think that is an, perhaps the most important element, you know, the use of compression and anticoagulant therapy and early ambulation and these sort of things that are really outside of the, the surgical procedure itself are probably as important, if not more so, in having a good outcome. Um, many surgeons do liposuction, um, but uh, if you're taking care of a specific subgroup that um, are at higher risk, you have to be well aware of those risks and how to mitigate them. And that's that's what I think was one of the main take-home messages of our of our trip. It's good to have a system, and so you take a system that's worked in its entirety, and you start with that and then you adjust based on your experience, the patient population, and new information. I think each of these individuals has developed a system over the course of years that is safe and effective and works in their hands. And that's, that's true in many areas of surgery. And, 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 and it was good to see the variety and to hear the insights and the commonalities as well as the differences from each of the surgeons.